Oh, neat. You get to play as Rambo. Man, I loved him in UHF. Next on the Amigos. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of everyone's favorite West Virginia-based Amiga show. <laughs> it's Amigos, Everything Amiga Podcast. I'm your good buddy, your good pal, Amigo Aaron. What if they weren't your good buddy and your good pal? Everyone in this room was, I consider, a dear, close personal friend. Unlike you... Even, even Nightbot? Especially Nightbot. Unlike yourself, subbing this week for the boat who's on assignment. It's the Brent. <laughs> He's on assignment for the show? Yeah. Wow. That's going to be an interesting turnaround. We, we, we sit boats in communicado right now. He's taking care of special amigo business tonight. <laughs> and, so, and so we brought you in. Plus, we can't risk boat in the risky woods. That's fair. Boat's I'm not, expendable. Boat's not what I would call woodsy. And you look Wait, like I am. Well, you look like one of the Ozark Mountain Daredevils. That's I, why. I you can't big, play. long beard, green hat. I can play the part. Camouflage sleeve. You're ready to go. <laughs> to be fair, that's a camouflage cuff sleeve. Now let me let me or talk to you. Sleeve cuff. If you since, want to say it correctly? Since we're talking to, about the risky woods, risky woods, if you will. Uh, you know, we're here in West Virginia. It's uh, true. And uh, what do we got a lot of here? We, I mean, drunks. No, no, woods. We oh, got a lot of woods. woods that yes. They live in the woods. Oh, gotcha. So that means there's a lot of action that we get into in the in the forest. No, we it? don't. Well, I do, I and mean, you do too. That's what I was going to ask you. Oh. I would like you to regale the people here because since we're talking about the risky woods, all right. What risky things have you gotten up to in the woods? Oh, you know what? I have a story. Okay, for get into it. Go ahead. When I was a, a much smaller lad, okay. I would say, I, I think I was around 12 or 13. Okay. Uh, our grandfather yeah. took... Papa. Yes. Yeah. Took Philip and I out, out to the camping in the woods. Our cousin We're, Philip. Yes. Okay. Rough camping. No tent. No actual... I take that there back. There was we, no tent? We did have a tent. That's not... But, if you don't have a tent, you're not even camping. <laughs> you're just sleeping in the woods. But we, we had a... a, a, a Place on the river, yeah, you know, with woods adjacent, but it was all a package deal when you're in West Virginia, yeah. And we had to catch our own food. Papa said he wasn't going to feed us. Okay, and, okay. He said I brought <laughs> flour. If you, ca- <laughs> if that's you, all he brought. He, well, that's what he said. He said I brought some flour. And this is young dumb Brent. He's like, oh crap, we're screwed. It's yeah. over. Yeah. So uh, he goes, yeah, you catch something. And I will, I will fry it up for you. Okay. He said, I'll even clean it. So we were okay. like, all right. I assume he meant like a fish. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, because, no. We, we well, I mean, well, we could have I don't understand. Hunting. We yeah. could have found it, but no, this was a fishing expedition. So we go out there, and we catch, we do catch something. Yeah. And I mean, we're out there for a long time, but we do manage to catch something. But it was one of those uh, bottom-feeding fish. Yeah. And, 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 the nasty one. And Papa was like... Good enough. Cleaned it up, cooked it. It was horribly nasty. <laughs> the rest there was complete death by food poisoning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you've you've never been hunting in proper hunting. Yes, I have. You have been yeah, hunting I, with once. what? What with a gun or a yes, bow? Twenty two. Really? Yes. And what were you hunting? Uh, deer. And how did you do? Well, first of all, you don't go hunting deer with a twenty-two. Why not? Because that's too small of a caliber. I mean, I guess you technically you could. Well, I don't know anything about guns. Yeah, that's not gonna. That's not gonna do. You need one of those AK forty-seven. This was. Kinda... I was hunting adjacent, I should say. You were just holding a gun, hoping nothing showed up. Oh yeah, because I'm I'm not a hunter. Could you shoot a deer if a, if one of them jumped in your path here? You could shoot one. You mean if I had a gun? Yeah. You I'm, mean just for the for the sheer morally could for you, the sheer pleasure? Could you of drop killing? the hammer on Bambi like that? No, no, oh, well, here's the situation. Is this the, the sheer thrill of trophy hunting, or am I like, if I don't get some food, I'm going to die? Well, I know. I've, just from looking at you, you could kill for food. There's yes. no doubt about it, and probably have. But I'm talking about, in this case, for sport hunting. No. Yeah. No, that's just not me. So why were you out there with a gun? Just the appearances? I, yeah. yeah. I, I, Aaron, I was playing the role. You know, it's funny. I, of course, I, never, I was in the Boy Scouts for a while. So I've camped a bunch of times, but I've never, the only hunting I've ever done was snipe hunting. We didn't find him, by the way. <laughs> we also looked for Mothman and Bigfoot. No luck so far either. 
Uh, but I have actually. I've hit a deer. I've hit a deer with my car. I don't think that counts. And then I ran over the corpse of a deer in another car. That definitely doesn't count. That was much worse than hit. By the way, the deer I oh, hit, yeah. he no sold it. He he fell off the hill, ran into my car, and then just like jumped away. Oh, he hit you. Well, it was a little. I was still moving, so it was sort of a combo, you know. But the uh, they on the, I assure you that deer died on the interstate going home one time I ran over a deer yeah, that's way worse and I and the thing is on my way home I heard this dragging noise and I got back to Lex and I drove like an hour and I was like man I don't want to look under the car and so the next day I had to get, I got enough courage to look up under the car I'm like let's see what this massacre looks like and thank God. A plastic panel had been broken off and was dragging. I've never been so happy to have my car damaged in my life. So I guess what we're saying here, Brent, neither one of us are what you would call uh, an astute hunter. No. Right? no. I, and for the record, I have nothing against those who hunt. I mean, like, for especially in, say, West Virginia for deer hunting, yeah. you've got to you've got to thin out the population. That's true, because I'm, also, I'm almost always hit a deer about a million yeah. times, and everyone does. Yeah. One thing I can say uh, without a doubt, though, that anytime me or you would go into the woods, that's some risky woods, brother. Bam! It's risky woods. Risky woods. You know, I know we I kind of are, had you come in to fill in for the boat this week, yes. but you had, had you heard of this one? Uh, no. Uh, before, mm-hmm. before, which I'm surprised, considering it's an electronic arts game. Well, I mean, listen, you can't hear of them at all. They make a lot of games, they that's do. for sure. So, as I mentioned, this week we're talking about the risky woods. Uh, I had heard of this one. I don't remember if I've ever played it. Uh, to be honest with you, but I played it now. So this bad boy uh, debuted. In '92, uh, this was on this was on multiple platforms. I'm not sure yes. which platform was the lead, but it wouldn't be surprising to me if it wasn't the Amiga. Really, uh, you think? Well, it's just because of the way. If you look at the other versions, the Amiga version. Wait, looks, what year was this? Well, 1992. I bet DOS was the lead. DOS came out in '92 as well. They both came out the yeah. same year, but the difference is DOS version looks a lot different. I mean, and I would, so you never know. And a lot of times the, in this era, you would still base the Amiga, but who knows? Uh, also, since it was, it came out uh, where it came from in Spain. That was probably more of a of a Amiga stronghold That's than it fair. was DOS. Uh, it also, in '92, came out on the Mega Drive slash Genesis, and then uh, and on the ST. And then in 2021, I couldn't believe this one. Apparently, in 2021, this got a uh, release for Windows. I don't know if that's on Steam or whatever. Huh. I went back. That kind of surprised me, if I'm honest. I wonder if they changed anything. I, I don't know. I didn't look at that one. Uh, so, as you mentioned, this is published by uh, EA, developed by Zeus. And by the way, EA's published a ton of stuff for the Oh, media. yeah, I know. Uh, but the developer, this was Zeus Software. Uh, Zeus had a game on the Amiga called Crack Does Pay. So, I... <laughs> Clearly, hey, you they, gotta be honest with maybe the they maybe they moved to Huntington, West Virginia, so <laughs> they left uh, Spain. Uh, this is this is a it's funny when you look at the listings, which it says copyright a dynamic software. It's funny, we've covered a couple games from dynamic. I'll get to what that means here in a minute, but we uh, dynamic was responsible for one of our all time favorite games, Narco Police, which we <laughs> was very unpopular. Another game from them, Satan. That sounds pretty good. What do you know? Navy Moves, Hammer Boy, and GP Master. They did some other games, but they, they were. This was a situation where a company went bankrupt, and someone else like picked up the gimmick. Yeah. That's basically how it ran. Now I'm going to list off a few names here, and you tell me where you think this these guys came from. The creators of this were Ricardo Puerto and Raul Lopez. Uh, the producers Victor Ruiz and John Roberts, and musician. Jose Antonio Heron Martin. I'm going to guess one of the Filipino countries. Wrong. Spain. <laughs> I mentioned it earlier, you idiot. Uh, I will say, and, and none of these guys did much. Uh, I will say the musician on this hilariously did the music for Strip Fighter, which we haven't covered Strip Fighter yet, but it's on my list. Uh, and uh, the box oh. art the box art for this is done by David John Rowe. This guy's actually a prolific box art guy. Yeah, the box art's pretty good. Yeah, and get this. And he's done some of my favorite games. Aquatic Games, Budokan, Chambers of the Shaolin, uh, James Pond 2. So he's done some pretty good stuff. Shadow of the Beast 3 was one of his. Uh, and this originally debuted for the, uh, I'd say, normal sum of 25 pound 99p. 
uh, in that ballpark. Um, It's a OCS ECS game that was released in '92. So, with all that said, uh, what are you doing, Risky Woods? I really, I didn't know what even to expect out of this game. I was like, what is this game? Is it an adventure game? What you know? What is it? Well, what you got here is a straight up, I would say, old school style platform game. Yes. Me and me and Boat all to complain about, and me and you sometimes, these Eurocentric platformers. This one is just a there's just a tinge of that. I would pretty much call oh, it. Oh no, a, I wouldn't even call. I would no. Well, I would, the only tinge is the fact that you could you can finish the level and not bleed because you didn't free all the guys. Right, but that's that's no, I did that. So you could definitely oh, I do did, it. I know. I that's did it the, as well. But that's the tinge. Eh, that's, that's, that's the eh. tinge. So uh, this game. It's not like you got to go looking for them. Well, I mean, this here's the gimmick here. Uh, ancient monks preserve the wisdom of the lost lands, but they've been frozen in stone. As you do. By the bad guy, Draxos and his minions. Uh, you play a guy named Rohan, and you must uh, head into the woods and release all the monks and ultimately defeat Draxos uh, in, the, in a final battle. What does that have to do with the woods? Well, it, because, listen, it's a woodsy joint. I don't know where... Oh, fair if enough. You've got the, if you've got the woods at your disposal, that's where you, that's where you start the game, the woods. Um, so, <clears throat> again, this is a platformer. This is an interesting game in a couple ways. <laughs> because, well, no, hold on a second. <laughs> well, yeah, you're already... Mo- what, at what, least it's got a couple things going for well, it. No, Good I mean, job. We play a lot of games where we're like... We where we Where you're like, you know, listen, the, one of the Amiga's weak spots is... The, the lack of buttons, okay? And this, I will say, this is one of the, this is a game with, that where that doesn't really come into play. No. If you're used to up or jump, you're fine. Yep. Uh, you do have to have, what there's one move you have to do a strong... Long hold. A long hold on the yep. button, but it's really, literally, maybe 10 times oh, in the yeah, whole game. Yeah, well... Yeah, I mean, it's not that many. That, but it, it's not bad. Okay, there are, there are four worlds in this game. Each has two levels, and there's also... Uh, boss levels, and there's also an overworld map. So this has got a little bit of what I would call like a Ghosts and Goblins. It is. This is someone played map. Ghost and Goblins and wanted to make a. Well, new I one. mean, I don't. To be honest with you, the gameplay this doesn't remind me of Ghosts and Goblins in any way. For one thing, I can last more than three seconds. So they're that tells no, you this reminds the guys me a are, lot of Ghosts. Really? And Goblins. Yeah. I read people that said that, but I didn't get it. Uh, so uh, there, are, it's just a, it's just a, what I would call an option rich game when it comes up. It sure come up. You hit start. You go. Yeah. Um, it's got it's got some nice tunes when you come up. It's yeah, got music. It's fine. got music and sound effects. You could turn them on or off. Or you can have them running simultaneously. Uh, colorful game. It's Ninety two. It better. Have I read. It. It, I read. This is a real uh, in terms of the graphics on this thing. It's they they're very unusual on the Amiga. They use a lot of the copper. Well, and they and they said this is one of the few games to do the graphics in the way that it does. And that the the backgrounds in this are di- are different than the other games' backgrounds because they're they're in some ways they're better, in some ways they're sort of more pl- plain. You know, did you look? Okay. Did you look at the other game versions? No, of this? no, no, yeah. no, no. I just mean the the yeah. version that's on the Amiga is okay. It's very passable. It's very colorful. Oh yeah, the graphics. Are yeah. Great. So let's talk about just first impressions. You boot this thing up, the music comes on. Yeah. You kick it off. What did you think? I died. Well, what already? What happened? No, I mean I I, I died before I. F- before my fingers made it to the, I'm going to move now button. Did you, what are you inferring? That the game's really hard? I uh, mean, it's, it's Ghost and Goblins levels of difficulty. No, I disagree with that wholeheartedly. Ghost and Goblins levels? No, yeah. no way, no, no way. I, I very much think it is. Okay. Um, I, I was confused at some of the choices they made, but I was okay with it. Yeah. And, and um... First impression wise, I did do what you did. I did not understand that I had to free the monks. Yeah, and I made it to the end of the level. I was like, "Huh, I didn't win." Yeah, yeah. And, and then I also I picked up some uh, uh, D power ups. Yeah, and I was like, and "Oh, it's gonna, gonna be gonna one of those type of games." Yeah. So this game has there's a, this game first of all graphically has a lot going for it. Yes, it's got Very pretty. nice a big. Colorful guys in it. The bad guys and the, and your main character look nice. Yeah, they're good size, good good backgrounds. You know, multi layer scrolling. Um, your guy starts out with just a knife that he throws. It's just so he's got like a missile weapon. That's yeah, a dagger. It, it, the 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 sprite on the screen 
in my opinion. I know we had talked about this and you disagreed. Yeah. But he looks like Rambo. I the, don't I don't agree with that. The I don't agree with that. The animated face in the corner looks like an anime character. Right. That's what the guy looks like. He's an anime guy. No, he looks like Rambo. Well, to me, no, I don't get that. Rambo didn't act like this guy either. I did I say he acted well, like Rambo? I think you're nuts. But anyway, so the the meat of this game is a uh, 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 Shoot the enemy, avoid obstacles, jump up, jump from platform to platform. But there's a lot more going on. Yeah. First off, uh, you will come across uh, uh, enemies, and when you shoot them, and you're, they're they're every, there's a lot of enemies in this. Yes. Skeleton guys flying like uh, guys. Bugs. There's yeah. some. There's, there's this game has one of the worst enemies I've ever seen in any game in it, which I'll get to him later. But a bit. But when you shoot these guys, money falls out of them. Now. Uh, they're in the form of coins. You can walk up and get the coin, and you have to you, you pull down and hit the button, and you get the oh, coin. You don't hit the button. No, you yes. do, you do. You I mean, you have to go pull. You have to yes. pull down. Yes. And so there's and that's important because occasionally you'll come upon a, a treasure chest, and then you can shoot it a bunch of times, and a bunch of stuff will fly out of it. And you touched on this earlier, and this is a pivotal point in the game. Some of the things in the treasure chest are good. You can get a, uh, you can get temporary like a weapon, or you can get uh, uh, power ups. power ups or something to increase the level of time you've got. But a lot of stuff hoses you. Uh, an apple, there's an apple that'll basically knock you out, and what that does is just make the time go by. Well, no, it, the, the apple is one of the best items in the game. No, because it also gives you health. Yeah, but the time, the, the thing I'm talking about, when you eat it, the time you lose time, when you, you fall, fall asleep. When you fall asleep, yeah. you gain health. Right, but you don't want to fall asleep because you're losing time. You can't get hurt while you're asleep. You're still and losing you gain time. Health. It, it's, it's and you well lay down. Worth it, it's pick not. It up. Don't get it. If you don't get it, you will not. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll make it. Don't worry about it. Don't listen to him. And then also, um, uh, in the some, there are things in there that will make the world turn upside down. Yeah, that's the first thing that happened to me. Some things in the church just will straight up kill you. Yeah. They will kill you. Well, Some stuff will make you shoot you back in the left. No, there are things that will kill you. I never just straight out died. I died. I, I took, I took uh, a large amount of health damage, and I guess if you took at the no, wrong there are, time, there are things that will you. kill you with full health. Oh, You'll I, die. I did not see that. Uh, but there's also things that will kick you back backwards in the level, yeah, which is those are real irritating. You go to the last checkpoint you're and at. And so what's the moral of the story? Don't pick up everything. Go over what you want, pull it down, and pick it up. Don't pick up everything. Because that's bad. Uh, eventually, you'll come across these things that look sort of like eye, like an uh, Egyptian eye, like it, like you'd see carved into a pyramid. Yeah. These things are basically your keys to get through uh, parts of the level. In fact, they actually call them the eye keys. Yeah. Well, there you go. And so you'll come across basically like a a, a wall of stone with that eye in it. And when you if you hold the button, if you have one of these, and it's there's a at the bottom of the screen. It will show you what you've got. It will show you if you've got one. And sometimes you have to get two to equal one. Sometimes yeah, you, have to pick up, you always have to pick up two to get but one. But if you hold your button down, uh, your guy throws that thing in the air, and the, the wall that was in front of you just uh, melts. Yeah. It shatters. Then you can keep going. Uh, this game is not too proud to cheat. Uh, there are a couple, like, right on the first level, there's an area where you jump on these, like, uh, it looks like they're sort of like collapsible landings. They don't necessarily collapse, but a huge boulder like Indiana Jones just falls out of the sky, and it's it's very Tomb of Horror esque. Yeah. It just and, and you have to get off those things quicker and smooch at you. So right away you're instantly going to die there the first time. It's not the only place that has some cheapery in it, uh, but it's, it's one of the first ones you're going to come across. Eventually, <clears throat> you're going to come across a statue of a monk. Uh, now it, there are two different types of these. There are statues of the monks that actually have an entombed monk in them. And then there are statues of the monk that don't have uh, an entombed monk they have in them. Evil spirit, right? So you, uh, but you gotta shoot them. As I couldn't tell a difference. You have to shoot them. At the, we were, when we talked about getting to the end of the level and not be able to leave, that's because you have a certain amount of these monks. You have to you have to rescue them all. And at the bottom of your screen, it'll tell you how many you need on that level and how many you've got. Yep. So don't even try to go off the level without having all the monks. If you try, it knocks you back. Also, if you try to go to a wall and you don't have the correct keys, so there are some areas where it'll automatically knock you back from there, too, so you have to go back and get the key. It sounds, at first, it's irritated me, but I understood why they did it. It's actually a benefit. Yeah. Because you've got to go back to that point regardless. To so get the item. From having to run back, uh, back to it. This is one of those games where the enemies never stop. 
You can't clear the screen. You can't clear the area. Enemies can come straight up a dead end uh, without any problems. See that tons of times you'll go down a path that you, where people were coming out of it. And it's a dead yeah. end. Uh, the uh, 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 the weapon you start off with is a dagger, but as you, we mentioned, you can get those coins. After you uh, finish off a level, you get to go to the store. Now, <clears throat> this game has a little bit of Sonic the Hedgehog in it. When you, let's say I've got fifty coins, all right? If I get hit. I'll drop coins, and the more I get hit, the more I drop. Yeah. Okay. And you also you lose health. Duh. You but. pick up and lose coins in multiples of five. Right. Right. So you, I, I often would get to the end of the level and have like uh, ten bucks. Like there's plenty of times. Yeah. And the thing is, if you stop to get coins over and over, there's a time limit, and you will run out of time. And I've had that happen to me. Yeah. And so I never had. I never <laughs> ran out of time. Oh, I did. I had it happen to me a bunch of times, and it's and, it, and the reason being uh, that I was screwing around too much. You can screw around. Uh, I can say I can say some, one thing right now with complete All right. confidence. All right, you cheated to play this game. I did both. I played both ways. And the reason why I know that, without question, is you would have never made it to the bad monks without cheating. Right. That's that's yes. probably and there's a reason for that. So this game, I did not, first of all, if you're telling me you thought this was as hard as Ghouls and Ghosts, you're nuts. It is. There, no, I don't agree. How I actually, far did you make it without cheating? I could get to I could get to the first boss without cheating. I don't believe you. I could. I do not believe you. I mean, it took a lot of going. No, I, I don't get there. believe you. I'll, tell you. I'll show you. I don't care if you believe me or not. I could do it. And it, because there's a rhythm to this game that I could get into. I, I, if, I, took, it, I took it slow. You got to 1-3... Yeah, uh, one is it one three or one four? One three, one you three. You made it to one three yeah. without cheating. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, absolutely. It's not that I didn't think it was that tough. Now, I made it. I made it. To and the I didn't end think that one two. I would have beat the end boss if I had any energy because I didn't think he was that tough either. Oh no, first end boss. But anyway, the 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 secret to this game is you have to you have to be uh, you can't be in too big a hurry, but you have to sort of hurry. You know, because you're, there's a timer. That's why I ran out of time a lot. But you, but the, now there's a point you're going to get to where you're screwed, and I'll, which I'll explain in a minute. So, like we mentioned, eventually you go to the shops. The first couple rounds, you won't. I didn't have enough money to buy anything new, yeah. hardly. When you beat the end boss in the third level, and I will say the end boss, these are interesting levels. They're real long, straight level with a big end boss at the end. Sometimes it's a big flying bug. Sometimes it's a big grizzly creature, and, and you, they're always unique sprites. Yeah, though. and they're so good. I was appreciative of they're that. good sized. Yeah, they look good. Yeah, they're they're big sprites. Sometimes it's like things that have like tentacles. Anyways, once you beat that boss, he drops a crap load of treasure, right? And you can that's where you can get your money. Then you can afford to upgrade your weapon to the store. Sorta. The store is limited, but you've got cool stuff in there, so you can get uh, right. Like I said you start with a dagger. You can get fireballs that you shoot from your hands. You can get battle axe, uh, and you can get boomerang is another one you can get, and you can get energy potion and chains. And chains. Now I went because I'm cheap. Most of the time I went with the axes, but occasionally I'd go with a fireball. And the interesting thing about the store is uh, you can get multiples. So, like for example, you can get two, three axes, or but you can't get fireballs and axes or axes and chains. You have to pick. I never had enough money to get the boomerang, and I tried. But I, did you ever get to try the boomerang? Mm -hmm. uh, the weapons make a pretty big difference in, in your ability to, mm. to do damage, and it also another thing it does that makes you gives you a wider space to shoot stuff. You've got more; it give, they're bigger than the knife, so you can jump up and down and shoot stuff. You've got wider range, sure. You know, vertically. Um, what did you think of? I want to talk to you about the controls. The, uh, the how do did you the control feel? How did it feel to you? How did you feel that the firing was? What about the and also the hit boxes? Uh, this game controls like crap. Really? And, yes. And the reason why is you are on a secret grid pattern where if you start start taking a step in one direction, uh, you will automatically end at a certain point. And visually on the screen, you are always one, it looks like half step to the edge of a platform. And I don't know if they did this on purpose. I'm assuming they did 
And it, well, you know what? I don't know. Because this is such a horrible gameplay mechanic. I can't imagine they did it on purpose. So, you have your platform. You're walking forward. You stop. You have enough room on that platform that you think, I can take one more step. You take that extra step off the edge, you're dead. And it happened so often. I died far, far more from falling in pits than I did uh, from the enemies. It's funny that you should mention that because I actually thought the controls of this was pretty good. Now, I, now I will say, hold now, on, the, the pit thing... Yes, it, until you understand where you can go, well, I can understand that. I mean, I, and I don't know, do you consider that part of controls? I do, because it's the stride of the step that is determined through the controls, right? Or it's the, it's the behind-the-scenes grid pattern that almost all games like this have. You have to finish your animation before he'll, you can actually do another movement, jump, or whatever. The other thing I really hate about this game... Uh, in the in that vein is if you die by falling in a hole first of all you don't die you take an energy loss yeah and we'll talk about how you do the lives in a second because that's pretty interesting when it puts you back on the platform that you fell from sometimes it pushes you a few things back but normally it just puts you back on the the platform that you started on it puts you in a location that you think you can take a step and then you fall right back off the platform. Yeah. It is infuriating. It does the when it replaces you, it doesn't it doesn't also it, it's got no problem with replacing you in the middle of enemies. Oh it, yeah, yeah, well that's a whole different ball yeah. of wire. But I yeah, I understand what you're saying. However, I got used to that. I like the Wow, I, how? I just I don't know, I just got used to it. I thought the controls on this I can only assume that well, never mind. I thought the controls on the I mean, think about it, even with un, even with unlimited lives, you could fall off pits. I I don't I'm not say I didn't fall off some, but I'm saying I got used to it wasn't what I call I had no little problem with the actual platforming. Oh I, I did. I thought the platform like jumping on stuff that was moving and so I know I really had no problem. No, no, I in fact moving platforms was far, far better than I thought the controls in this were okay. I really it, it was such a relief to not have to do like a thousand things to control her. If you consider that part of control. I mean, the up, down, left, right, jump when you tell them to jump, shoot when you tell them to shoot, all that was fine. But the, I, I guess technically what I was complaining about was the gameplay element. So I will agree with you the uh the controls in this are, are spot on. Yeah, I mean, not, I'm not gonna say it's the best thing I ever controlled, but it's. I thought it was. I thought it was played pretty well. You know, it's arcadey controls. Yeah, I thought that's what I thought it played. Your guy moves the decent clip. The enemies can be very relentless. I mean, they come come. They come pretty quick at you. Yeah. Uh, there's one enemy I want to single out in this game, and I believe it happens on the uh, second level. I, I went through the whole game. Okay. And the whole game, there's really, it's a lot of rinse and repeat, I mean, for the yeah. most part. Well, I mean, it's always got new visuals. But you know, it does, it does. But there's one enemy in this that's just sort of like, uh, do you remember, I'm trying to think what this would be like. It's it's almost like a flying cape, basically. It's this big, like, enveloping thing with spikes on it. These things ruin that. I mean, I hate them. I hate them more than any enemy I've hated in any game. I didn't get far enough to see they, them. They just come out, and they're real hard to kill, and they're on top of you, and you can't get any distance to get them off of you. If I had if I had unlimited lives, they'd have killed me a million times. They did. They killed me over and over and over. I hated them. It took me forever to figure out how to even kill one, and they're they're horrible. And they can, once they appear, they're, they're on and off the rest of the game. Aside from them... Most of the villains and bad guys in this are pretty much. They, some of them look yeah. good. Yeah, oh, the sprites, the graphics. You know, are but they're, to it's play. nothing yeah. right home about. And the levels are different, but it's not like, you know, it's risky woods. It's funny that a lot of this doesn't take place anywhere near. Almost the woods. none of it takes place. There's in the caves woods. and some yeah. other stuff. So, but I mean, uh, I, the levels are different enough, and I appreciate the fact that you uh, get the overworld map. It does give you an idea of what you're doing. Like it gives you, like it gives you an idea of what. Type of scenes are coming the exact up. Exact things, same thing I'll, as goes. Listen, to I like. I, I'm not saying it's not, but I like the. I liked it there too. I like games that give you a little overworld map action. I mean, it was fine. I think it looks good. Uh, Did like you I said, like it in Trojan. What's that? Trojan. I'm Trojan not very good at Trojan. It. Well, a lot of games do it. Uh, I like the weapons in this. I thought that was cool. It's when you free a monk, they do and a thing where it like okay. blows up the screen. That's kind of cool. The monks are. Cool looking when they launch themselves out. I thought that was cool. The uh, the treasure chests 
with the different stuff. What did you think about mixing in bad and good stuff? I mean, we, this isn't the first game to do it. Did that was that a real drag for you? Did you have any problems with it? Well, do you want me to just go over what I just go ahead the issues go. I just have with go. this game? What issues you got? Oh, get let comfortable. Me, get comfortable. Let me reposition here. All right. This is a good game that did not get any quality control, and that and in turn made it a bad game. There are quirks about almost every aspect of this game that are horrible. For example, the bad power-ups. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Bad power-ups that are over top of things that you have to pick up to progress in the game, and you just have to sit there and wait till they fade out, and sometimes that's like 15 seconds. Yeah. That's bad. Yeah, that you're right. That's, uh, that's the, true. The pit thing. Fall into a pit. It happens in games. Putting you right back on the edge of the pit where you fall again if you make any forward movements, that's bad. Uh, the weapons in this game. There are four types of weapons. One shoots straight. One shoots slightly arced up. One shoots slightly arced down. Yeah. And one shoots straight and then comes back. It's good to have a variety of weapons. Yeah. It's bad when the variety of weapons are almost no variety. Uh, the, the the visuals are fine. I mean, the weapons, and, they, they are different. They do arc differently, and it doesn't yes. make a difference. That's another reason I like the axes. Although, the problem with anything that arcs high, like the axes do, it takes a while to get them there. Yeah. But the fireball shoots straight. So it's it, it's sort of like you can doctor right. it to your gameplay if you can afford any of that stuff. Uh, the, the treasure chest and the money bags. Shooting them and the, and the money flies out. That's good. The money goes away before you have a chance to collect it. That's bad. That's part of having to pick up because sometimes you'll accidentally get bad stuff because you're in a hurry trying to get the money. Well, no, but I'm talking about where it's just a bag of money. Oh, yeah. And you're just shooting the coins yeah, and yeah. the coins yeah. are coming out. It does and, do that. And yeah. then you go over to collect them and they're gone because they fade out too fast. Yeah. You got to be careful how you get into the chest. You got to get into one chest and they overlap. You're right. I'll give uh, you that. Enemy spawns. Like, it's good to have a lot of enemies coming at you. You know, giving you that kind of relentless feel. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Having enemies spawn where they sh physically should not be able to spawn, that's bad. It's but, old school, yeah. It, no, this, but this is 92. You're right. Dead end, dead end uh, hallways, and they'll keep coming back. You're right. That does happen, yeah. Uh, there's, an, there's a place in this game where, and I didn't get to it, but I saw the video, you cannot get a key item that you have to have to progress in the game. It is on an elevated platform. Yeah. So you There's have a lot of those. you have to go to the end, get sent back to be able to pick it up. Because when you get to the end and you don't have the item, it puts you it shoves you back in the level. Well, where it shoves you back to is the at the point of where you collect the item. I assume that there's another way to get that. No, there's not. Every playthrough I watched, I watched. Really? I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they they make the monks harder to get to later on too. They can be real difficult to get to. You have to really risk it a lot to get to them. Having the apple thing where you eat the apple and you fall asleep and time passes. That's a fun mechanic. It's a risk reward. I hated that. How much time do you want to give up versus health? Right? That's good. It's a, that's a player given decision. And while you're sleeping, you're invincible. What's bad is when you wake back up, an enemy's on top of you, and you immediately take damage that you can't avoid. Actually, I think all of that's <clears> bad because when I'm playing a game, an action game, the one thing I don't want to do is sit there and watch my guy sleep oh, it's, on the screen. It's like three seconds. I it's still don't want to bad. see it. I want to play. I don't want to sit and watch him sleep. That's this, goofy. This game has a lot of cool animations when he <clears throat> throws the key up into the air or yeah. you release the monk or something. Yeah. All those are awesome, except you get locked into an animation. The enemies don't. And when you break out of your animation, you immediately get hit. Yeah. I mean, these are all things that could have been tweaked and... Trust me, I could keep going, but I'm not going to. You, These are all things that could have been tweaked to make this an awesome game. And because they weren't tweaked, I didn't have fun with it. <clears throat> I'm done. Okay, uh, listen, I'm not, not going to speak. This is not a perfect game. It's got it's got multitudes of flaws. And there, it's a thing, what gear takes you, it's another one. that These are mechanics <clears throat> that could have easily been nullified like by the programmers. Like, I, I, I know they were trying to do something different. 
But like you're right, and so now some of it would be harder. Like the guys coming down empty tunnels and stuff. That a lot of games did that. I'm not gonna hold the feet to the fire on that too much. But yeah, they did do a lot of things that were odd. Uh, they made some odd choices. I think some of the times they do that to differentiate the game. Now this game, this game is, I would call this just a standard platform adventure game <clears throat> with. But I mean, it's attractive. It's got good tunes. Yeah, uh, the music's okay. It's a, but it plays and you get both. Yes, you do get both. You know, and it's the the it should, we shouldn't be excited about that. But we oh, are. we listen. Are you kidding me? Being boat whine about that all the time. I like the concept of what you're doing, and I like the control. I think it's an okay game that is brought down by the just the the small dumb things, the bad choices. You know, or, I don't know, ineptitude, whatever you want to call it. Maybe they're running the gun and get it done or whatever. You know, I like most of the game, but everything you said, I'm not going to fight. They do beam you back into bad guys. They do wake you up into bad guys. They do put you on the edge of the pits when they kick you back out of the pit. They do uh, a lot of stuff like that, uh, and that that is just dumb. I don't yep. know why they did it, you know. Yep. Well, uh, Also, the treasure chest, really, <clears throat> you can get, uh, like, this fireball protection that can last for, like, two seconds. You can get killed. You can get put to sleep. Uh, you can get money, but really, I mean, like, I would like to. How about some pickups that don't like? It'd be nice to get a pickup of a weapon that doesn't involve me going to the store. That, Cut me some slack, brother. Some, it's so hard to keep money because you keep dropping it. Yes, well, that's that, another that's aspect. That's another aspect that's. Dumb. What do you think about that? It's dumb. You don't like it? No, obviously not. If you, get I, this guy a new change purse. I would. <laughs> I don't even mind so much. That if you die, you lose all your money. Yeah, that's a common trope. You don't, in well, games. you don't. Yeah, don't. Oh, yeah. When you die, okay. Uh, oh, but every time you get hit, yeah, you lose coins. Is really annoying. Yeah, really, really annoying. Uh, we should talk about real quick how the life works in this game. Okay, you have X amount of lives. You start with like three lives, and you have an energy bar. And as you go, your energy bar, when you get hit or something, or you fall in a pit, your energy bar depletes. When your energy bar runs out, you don't necessarily die, quote unquote. It depends on what you were doing to have your energy run out. A lot of times, you'll just loop around and start to instantly have a new guy with a new health bar, and your life total goes down. Yeah. Uh, and just in the, the uh, reverse of that, if you get health, you go above full hit points, you will gain an extra stock, which I love that. I think that's a great aspect of this game. Um, it's different. You can get extra lives, and the extra lives are really cool because a little mini you jumps out and runs, and if you don't get him in time, he'll run off the screen and be gone forever. I, mean, I forgot about that. That's yeah. really cool. That, right? it, when the first time that happened, I was like... I had I like I had uh, Army of Darkness flashbacks. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. what is going on? And and that's what kills me about this game is you can tell that there were people on the project that cared, and I mean that's huge. Yeah, I I know that it's especially '92. This was when that kind of thing teams were getting bigger, and you could tell some people just did not care in their task in a game. But this, it seems like there were people that really cared and and put in those little touches, those little quirks that make are interesting to talk about, and interesting to see, and interesting yeah. to experience. And it's so frustrating they didn't go the extra mile to clean up all the bad stuff. It's funny, too, because as you get into this game, like, the platforming gets a little trickier. Getting the yes. rest of you in the months, it's a little trickier. But it's not like, like, if you play, I hate to make this comparison, I'm going to. Play a game like Mario, any of the Mario Brothers. Like, as you get well in, it goes from just like a platform going up and down like platforms spinning and you're dodging. Yeah. Look, this doesn't go anywhere. It's in this, no. nowhere near that. Mm -hmm. So no. I don't think the difficulty is the bad guys that they sick on, especially that one nasty one, are there and, and the relentlessness of them that gets old quick. And, that, and so that's they sort of they sort of uh, um, I'm not gonna say front loaded, but I mean it shows you no, its cards. The, the the difficulty of this game starts high. And just straight lines all the way to the Well, end. I mean, it gets harder because of that couple of those bad guys. I will say, uh, what, I do want to give kudos, because we've seen plenty of these games uh, that don't do this. I like that the end bosses were all different. Yes. I, I don't think any of them were like, uh, 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 in Costigal. It's not no. like they revamped. <clears throat> but they were all big. But they also put something, they made an effort to yes. give you some cool end bosses, yep. which is cool. 
With, no, I, I with appreciate somewhat it, yeah. unique attacks. Yeah, and some of them were, I mean, were like I said, the, the the weird tentacle to eyeball thing was way different than the weird bird thing, yeah. for example. We'll just throw a couple out there. Uh, the game, I'll play it all the way to the end. It has an interesting ending. It shows your guy, like, standing supreme, gives him a little message. And the version I played dropped into this vector, like, beatbox. Yeah. It played, like, a song, like a beatbox, a long song with this, like, uh... Uh, uh, e- equalizer. equalizer pounding out, which I thought was interesting, you know. Uh, so they, like you said, someone cared enough, yes. but they just they did what they did uh, yep. overall. But I thought it was a neat game. I had a I had a quick cup of coffee with the other versions of this. Uh, the uh, it's well, like I said, they don't really look like the Amiga version in a lot of ways. They look. I, the Amiga version is the best one, I'm, in my opinion. Yes, Better than Genesis. Well, I didn't look at the Genesis. I looked at I looked at a couple of them. I didn't look at the DOS, but I looked at the rest of them. The DOS is good for dolls. Yeah. And this scrolls fine. For the most part, there are some slowdown. Uh, this was the last, just to finish up uh, the, the particulars, this was the last bit of software that Dynamic Software worked on before they went bankrupt. That's how I ended up getting, that's how I ended up with another... Uh, uh, with another uh, person. Uh, get this. The I, This is crazy to me. The Mega Drive version of this was the first Spanish game to be ported to a console system. Yeah. All right. That's weird. <laughs> it's according to Moby here. Uh, and then uh, lastly, I'm going to read this verbatim. I read this on Moby. And of course, I don't, I'm not a hardware guy, but someone might find this interesting. Uh, according to Moby, the Amiga version of this game featured parallax scrolling with 16 colors in the back layer, which is quite a technical effort. The background was not implemented with the Amiga's build and parallax scrolling possibilities. This would not have allowed so many colors for the background. Hmm. Other games with parallax scrolling featured two or four colors in the background, but these colors usually changed in certain lines or scenes, creating the impressions of more colors. They were sort of tricking the eye. Yeah. Uh, Risky War- Woods works with an extensive Risky copper... Woods. Yeah, thank you. Copper list, one of the Amiga custom chips, obviously, to create the complete background with sprite multiplexing. Uh, the limited amount of hardware sprites is constantly reused and synchronized with the cathode ray beam. You're getting real technical there. <laughs> this technique was rarely used in a commercial game. You don't see a whole lot of uh, Amiga... Hardware talk on Moby. So when this popped up, I'm like, I better mention this on the show. Well, I'm sure they copied and pasted it from a good Come source. Some, <laughs> you might be right. Uh, we did get some reviews on this, Brent. It, 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 I should mention uh, before I get to the reviews. Let's see what the actual repeat, like professional reviewers thought of this. And I was surprised. How do you think? You without looking, I know you haven't looked at the reviews. How do you think this reviewed on uh, on uh, the uh, the magazine for the Amiga ninety two? Yeah, they probably gushed over it like a gusher. Well, uh, the lemon score in the seven point three two. Well, that's not a magazine. That's a modern one. And then your the rest of your magazines uh, f- fell into the sort of the eighties here. Really, uh, Amiga Action gave an eighty one. Amiga Computing an eighty. Amiga Format. They dropped the hammer on this thing, 65, Amiga Games, 68, Joker, 60, Amiga Magazine, 7 out of 10. So you can see um, there really weren't anything. I don't see a single score here. I see one score in the 90s, CU Amiga. They're pretty liberal with their scoring down there. Wow, well, apparently the one, Electronic Arts didn't didn't send the checks right. I read I read this review because I wanted to see what the heck happened. The one in 92 gave us an 84%, and then I, they, when they re-released at 94, they dropped their review down to 61%. <laughs> so it, this thing fell out of favor uh, big time. And according to what I've got here, the average magazine rating on this, 77%. Uh, that's far lower than I thought it would have been for this time on the Amiga. Do you, wanna, do you have a thought as to where you would put it? If you C- were to, minus. If you want a letter grade. What, I want a number grade. Uh, out of what? Out of 100. You know, like, out like, of you're, 100, like you're at school. So, like... 70. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. So we did get some reviews here I want to go over. No, you know what? That's probably too generous. I will say... Am I too generous? Yeah, I will say 58. Okay, fair enough then. So we're going to start off with our, gosh, our longtime buddy here. Let me get my, I just lost my 51. thing. 51. Would you stop? You have to pick one. Which one is it? I'll just keep keep looking. I'm going to keep sliding. No. We're going to start off with our uh, good buddy, Alien Breeder, or Alan Breeder, as you referred to him at one time. Uh, Risky Woods is a game that was right up my alley back in the day. Great graphics and music, fast action, and too hard for me to get very far. Graphically, it reminds me a bit of Jim Power. 
Yeah, now I think about it, yeah, I can see that. Uh, uh, but it looks a little bit like a rough and tumble. Jumps can be too pixel perfect to survive, but still a pretty fun game. Pretty identical to the Sega version, except for the main character uh, dresses a bit differently. Rambo. I don't know about that. Overall, 810 top bananas out of 1,000. So, a a Alien Breeder liked this thing up to 80, up in the 81% zone. Our good buddy Pajaco chimed in as well, Brent. Uh, this game looks and sounds incredible and has sound effects and music at the same time. Put away that celebration, Kate, because that's where the good stuff ends. Uh-oh, I feel a burial coming on. Risky Woods punishes player by trial and error, and it just isn't fun. It was probably great uh, if you played it when it first launched, though. Coins are needed for weapons and shops. Have to be collected manually. You have a short time to get them, and if you die, you drop them on or place a little weights back at the level and don't get enough time to get your coins back. That's true. It's just not like Sonic. Some pickups can have a positive or negative effect. You won't know until you grab it. And often, they'll overlap with something that you want on a limited screen time means just going for it and hoping is the best. That's, that does happen. Some, some souls you rescue are evil and hurt you when released, which, again, you won't know until you try. And if you reach the end of the level, you haven't rescued the good ones, you have to restart the whole level. The platform collision is poor, and you will fall off the edge while trying to make some of your jumps. And there are some parts where jumping is required, but you can often get by a previously unseen flying enemy mid-jump and fall to your death. Overall, this is more disappointing because the framework of a great game is there, and it could have been a stone-cold classic. Four out of ten. Yeah. Man, I'm Yeah, surprised. I think a four is fair. Our good buddy and musical genius Barkbit chimed in on this one. I remember Risky Woods finally and used to blaze through it quite easily in my youth. In 2024, I could only get to the third boss and the flaws of the game are more apparent. Endless spawning enemies, a tight time limit, and a plethora of confusing pickups make this game feel a bit off, to say the least. You basically need to stock up on fireballs, nudge and jump your way forward, and never let go of the fire button. You also need to find a few good spots to farm some coins for later upgrades, but don't take too long. Remember that pesky timer. The gorgeous graphics and cool soundtrack make up for some of the flaws, but I suspect that if you have no nostalgia for this game, you won't enjoy it much. If you choose to acquire this game, make sure you stay away from the beta version, which has the worst controls and is missing sound and game elements. Six out of ten. Evil monks. From, <laughs> from our good buddy Barkbed. So there you go, uh, Brent. Any, any final thoughts on the old Risky Woods? I mean, it's a uh, I, you you were screwing around, but what really? Where do you place this? This is a C level game or lower than C? Yeah, I, I think it's a low C. Re okay, I, you know, I'm gonna I kind of liked it. I mean, yeah, you can't go above C because of its many many flaws. Yeah, uh, but uh, it's unfortunate because it could have been a it, it could have been a contender. And just to close it up, I looked this up on eBay because uh, I was interested. Because, you know, every time I play one of these games, I want to buy it. This is no exception. Uh, but I won't be buying this one. Uh, I saw, I kid you not when I say this, there's a guy on there that's got a couple copies of this stuff. He's asking for $1,080 or best offer. I thought to myself, well, you got a guy fishing. Then I looked, one of these sold for 52 bucks, and there's another guy selling one for 100 bucks. So there's actually, mm. this is a game that apparently, I don't know if it just didn't sell. I mean, you're getting to a point now in the late... Days of the Amiga. I mean, this isn't too late, but I mean, you're getting to the point now where maybe uh, the the game just uh, wasn't sold enough to where it's now it's valuable. You never know. So, final thoughts on this one. It's risky, but I would give it a shot. Welcome to Retro Rewind. I'm your host, British Jones. Whether you enter the Amiga, Commodore 64, or Tiger Floral Print Speed Suits, Retro Rewind has all you need from the friendly hosers of the Great White North. Looking to upgrade your Amiga? Check out the Amiga OS 3.2.2 Kickstart ROM for just $18. Or maybe you need a C64 or C128 diagnostic harness. Grab one while they're hot. Don't miss our best sellers like the 1541 Transit Card for just $1. Or the incredible Amiga Coin Cell Battery Adapter. Shop now at Retro Rewind Limited and bring your classic computers back to life. Retro Rewind Limited. Frank's the man. Amiga News. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's time for some Amiga News, brother. He talked. 
I talk during the train. It, it's cool. Oh I'm down gosh, with it. Man. I'm the creator of the train, so I can do what I want. I got choke slammed last time I did that. Listen, it's it's news time, and myself and the boat have cobbled together a few stories here for us to talk about. Breaking uh, news. Breaking news. Yeah. So let's look at this one here first. This is the this is a new game from our good buddies over at Indie Retro News. It's Jet Hunters. Spelled weird guy style. I wonder why it's called. Well, can you make it J H E R S? No, Aaron. It's J E T H U N T E R S. No, but why are some letters capitalized? That's what I can't figure. It's spelled cool guy style. People like capital letters, Aaron. Well, listen, I'm not going to talk to you anymore now. <laughs> so, this is a, another game coming out for the Amiga here. Let's have a look at this thing. I've not, to be honest with you, I haven't looked at this one. It's got a lot of scrolling here. It's like, you have to kind of get what. The, well, into the game here we go. So this looks like some kind of uh, vertical shooter here, the Brent, or excuse me, horizontal. Vertical would be up and down, wouldn't it? There you go. I'm sure dumb. <laughs> uh, let's see what they've got you here about sure this game. Are. It's a shoot 'em up called Jet Hunters, a game. Uh, the developer says he hit, uh, it isn't just a sequel to Jet Hunt, but a partial tribute to the game Zybex, which came out on eight big computers in the '80s. I'm not familiar with that one. Uh, what do you think of the look of this one, Brent? This is a sequel to another game. Shooters are all in their enemy patterns. If the enemy patterns are good, it's going to be a good shooter. This does look like an 8-bit game that has been moved up the line a little bit. Uh, this is a work in progress. Uh, the author says, fingers crossed, it works as I'm finally getting back into Amiga coding. Uh, other things that I ha that have saved... And I hope to get a rhythm going soon, so watch this space. So, there you go. I don't know if we... Do we get a guy's name here on this? I couldn't tell if we got a guy here. I'm going to guess his name. Oh, here the it is. The initials are H and... Or J and H. Cogla... C-O-A-G-U-L-U-S Coagulus? Coagulus. That's not bad. It's just too... I mean, I had to look at it. It's one of those... It's a think piece type of, type of name right there. So, that looks interesting. Uh, here we go. Here's another up and comer. R Squadron. R Squadron in the middle of the space. Let's see. If it didn't really work here. Let's see what we've got here. But you tried and failed. R Squadron, a name picked because squadrons A to Q have all been defeated. Ah. And totally not for pure all comedy reasons, according to this. I'm looking to see exactly. This is a game that's. Uh, is this itch that I know? This is. It's got its own web page, and it's available now as a, a as a ADF. ADF. I'm looking. Oh, here we go. We've got some video here for our squad. Have you ever heard of this one, the Brent? I have not. No. Have you ever played any of the other squadron games? Now this is a vertical shooter. I well done, one. Aaron. You got there eventually. Good job. Uh, yeah, thank you. I'm going to kill I mean, the sound gonna, on this. You're going to crash everything along the way, but you know you try. Well, I that's know. what we appreciate. Listen, so this has you. For you people up on, this on radio, this has you moving uh, uh, up the screen and fighting. This looks a lot, another like an 8-bit game that's been kind of moved up the line. We've got some moving stuff. It kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, um, Xenon 2 in a, in a way. What? What's so funny? That's what it looks like to me. Did, did you just compliment the game by saying it has some moving stuff? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm saying some games just have like static aliens you shoot. Some have cannons. Some have something that move. This has both. So it's kind of like a little bit of Zaxxon meets a little bit of Xenon 2, maybe. If you're listening on the podcast, it looks nothing like that. Please check what out the video. What do you think it looks like? What do you think it looks like? It Genius looks like boy. a vertical shooter. It looks like this thing's available uh, to download right now. So if you're interested in that, uh, head over uh, to monsters-legs.itch.io forward slash r-squadron. So it is an itch.io joint. I'll keep an eye on it. I like these little these independent players oh, that are yeah. making their own stuff. Even though you're mocking it, I'm going to no, be. I I'm didn't gonna, mock it. It sounded I mocked pretty mock. It sounded pretty mockish. Now, now if you're going to mock something, here we go. I told both to add this because I watched this the other night. It's a new offering from our good buddy Doug over the 10 minute Amiga Retrocast. Uh, and it's funny because me and Boat were just mocking this the other day, and I thought, well, how? What are the odds that someone would actually put the, uh, a video out on it? And lo, it came to pass, and it had to be Doug. This is the new eyebrows, Brent. Let me ask you, how often do you use your classic Amiga to browse the web? I would say almost every day at work. Really? No. I was going to say it'd be cool if you guys had a classic Amiga at work to like do D paint and stuff on because you were going to print, print print thing. When Do you guys have, have you wondered if they've ever had Amigas over there, Charles no. the Blueprint? I bet in the back room is a big stack of Amiga 3000. I, I assure you there was not. That would be cool. Well, Doug goes over. Uh, the new version of eyebrows. The eyebrows are sort of the quintessential 
uh, browser for the uh, for the Amiga. And they keep sweat out of your eyes. And no, no, yeah, very good. Uh, they've actually combined the uh, the 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 modern Amiga versions with the classic Amiga versions into one big happy version now. And Doug also mentions, I assume this is still going on, but the, the eyebrows is on sale right now. This thing's normally like sixty bucks. The brand. Uh, That's and ambitious. you also you also need another gimmick. You need a, you need multiple gimmicks to get it get it cooking. But once you get it lined out, you can access up to and including six different websites. I guarantee it. Maybe more. Actually, I did learn some stuff from this because there are some web pages you can go to that are specifically designed to accommodate your old computer, and so they will. You can go through them, and you can get the websites you normally couldn't get to, which is kind of cool. Frog Find. This is the a uh, uh, search engine for your vintage computer. It it sort of strips out all the stuff that your old browser can't view. You know, what do you think about? You know, because we don't talk to you about this too often, because me and you don't really get into this stuff too much, but. What do you think about getting on the web and browsing around on, on your classic computers, your Amigas, your old DOS machines, I don't know, your C64s, your Ataris? What's your thoughts? It's a novelty. I yeah. mean, it, you're, you're not going to go in there and get any serious work done, uh -huh. but there, there is novelty on it. I mean, it's just like uh, going back and trying to view something through a Netscape browser. It's, it's fun. It's cute. Uh, I think $60 is a very ambitious price. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, it's ambitious. I think you could get it now. I think it was like thirty-four bucks, something like that, for a limited time. Uh, and there's up if you can upgrade from your old versions for various amounts of money. Uh, you know, here's the thing. As far as I know, there are only really two browsers that are in current development for the classic Amiga OS. This is one of them. And I will say, Doug mentioned something here that doesn't surprise me, but I thought was amusing. He's like, this thing can surf the web better than one of his more recent old Macs. That that this because. Once Apple puts a kibosh on their old stuff, you can't do jack with it. So um, that's kind of funny that you can take an Amiga. I mean, you can take an Amiga 1000 and slap eyebrows on it, and, and if you've got the right, the right guts in that thing, for 85, you can browse the net. It's kind of a, it's a unique novelty, if anything. You know, but I, I mean, suppose it is. And you know, the, we do mock the price because it is expensive. And but and Doug mentions that hey, you know, the price on this is expensive. And Doug even mentions, I think I'd brought knock this down about half. Which I'd say at thirty bucks, I'd be a lot more liable to get into it. But you know, they've got overhead or whatever. It's guys got to make a buck. I can understand that. And and the one thing you can also count on is that if you've got a, someone taking their old classic Amiga and surfing the net, then this person probably has a lot of cash because you <laughs> because the old Amigas don't surf the net. You've got to put crap in them. You know, your five hundred, your two thousand. You got to you've got to work to get that stuff online. So yeah, I get you. You know, so anyway, it's I, I was I'm glad to see Doug getting back into it. Doug recently moved, uh, and so he's he's getting back in the game. So if you're into ten mark, uh, I would check check this out. I enjoy it. Uh, the brand I like. like I said I like Doug's. I like Doug's stuff. I also want to shout out. Uh, we don't have it on the news here. But I want to shout out the new Chris Edwards video. I also watched this week. Uh, Chris Edwards. Uh, is was working on a uh, Amiga 3000 of absolute doom. Everything on it was jacked up. It's, it's part one. Uh, and uh, again, I look at these videos, and he showed this board before he started working on it, and I would have just taken this thing and chucked it. He's, and he's doing it for free to some guy. So I'm going to give Chris that. Uh, he, he's always entertaining when he goes in there and rips this stuff apart. Uh, I think he's out of his mind, but uh, there you go. Uh, I want to cut touch on a couple things, Brent, uh, if I may. Uh, before we move out of the news. Keep on touching. Okay. I don't have a graphic for this, but I'm going to mention now. We are looking at doing another International Computer Club, Brent. I heard rumors. You've never, not one time, have I ever seen you do anything or show up at any of these meetings. So will this be the the time that you may do some sort of uh, 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 display or show up and, and, and uh, help us out at one of these? Uh, you know, it depends on what it is. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, we look right now. I think we're pretty much set on this one. It's going to be April twentieth, oh, twenty twenty four, at four p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That way, uh, this is to accommodate some of our European uh, uh, buddies who, we, you know, because normally I used to start this thing at like at like seven or eight, and it was killing them. So we've knocked it back to four p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's a pretty decent time, for, I think, for everybody to get involved. Uh, and the way the International Computer Club works is. Uh, we will. Uh, we're just going to have a big uh, meeting. Whoever's interested in doing it, if you're part of our Discord, you know, just come to the Discord meeting, and you'll be able to either just watch or you'll be able to participate, interact. 
Well, of course, we'll be streaming this on Twitch and YouTube. If you actually want to do something at the meeting, and that can be a book review, that can be a, a, a project uh, that you're working on, it can be a tour of your computer room or your software library, it can be a game, it can be pretty much, I don't think we've ever turned anyone down. We programming tips, we usually have happy in there giving tips. So if you've got anything you want to uh, to actually go on and, and show at this thing, We'll have a sign-up sheet in the Discord probably about this weekend. You'll be able to sign up uh, for your project, and you'll be able to fill in how long you think it'll take and in what form. We'll also accept videos. If you want to send just a video in, we'll do that. Uh, if you've got a product that you sell, uh, like Frank usually is on the show, if you're selling stuff that you'd like to maybe show off, something new, we're okay with that too. So if you have any questions on this, you can uh, contact me at argpresents at mail.com. Or you can contact me in the Discord. Like I said, the sign-up sheet should be in the Discord uh, within the next couple days, Brent. So hopefully we'll get you in on that. that uh, Brent, you never actually participate in that sort of thing. Uh, you got any other projects? You want to? You got anything lined up that you want to talk about here before we move out of the news? No, I don't think so. All right, fair enough. Well, let's see what we're playing next week. Of course, you're off the hook, theoretically. But let's see what I'm going to be playing. Yes. F-17 Challenge. That's a, that's a car, by revolver. the way. I do know that. It's it's racing week. We're going to be racing in the Me. F-17 Challenge. There you go. I don't, do you know what an F-17 is? I thought that was a plane. No, I assume that's a Formula One It car. is a car. I don't know. Maybe it's F-1-7. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Are you, are you a dumb man? Why would the dash be going vertical? I don't know, man. I just For me, an F-17 sounds like a plane than a car. Maybe that's the challenge. You have to navigate your plane on a race course. That'd be kind of fun. Um, Brent, thank you for filling in this week, uh, my good friend. Uh, we'll be back uh, this coming weekend for ARG Presents. If you're uh, ta- watching it on tape, it should be up by the time you hear it. If you are watching it live, then we'll be back Sunday, our usual time, Sunday, uh, 10, p- a- excuse me, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, ARG this week. We're not 100% sure what we're going to be doing on ARG. We're having a little bit of problems. Uh, getting hooked up with the the current uh, game machine. What was the name of this? Do you remember the name of it? Uh, the Poly. I, I believe it's called the I Ain't Gonna Work. Yeah. Anymore. Well, it's a, it's a this thing. It's an emulation that we have to actually sign up and stream through it. Like, cause it's it's basically like a uh, a centralized computer. It's not something that's really emulated as such. So we're having a little bit of trouble getting signed up. But we do know one guy that signed up, and it can work. So I'm hoping we get it signed up before the date. So, but we'll be doing ARG Sunday. Should be a lot of fun. And me and Boat will be back in the driver's seat next week uh, with another Amigos Everything Amiga podcast. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And uh, we will catch you guys on the flippy dippy. And so until next week, Brent. Adios. Amigos is made possible by contributions from listeners like you. Patreon supporters help choose the games we play, receive exclusive magnets, and get access to the Amigos Retro Gaming Discord server. Visit patreon.com slash amigospodcast if you'd like to support the show and join our community.